Somebody give me a color, uh, red or blue. We're going to use that to determine which one of these bins we uh, uh, pick from. Anybody? Okay. Your choice. Red, blue. Um, and so what this is going to, what this demonstrates is our ability both to uh, recognize objects, but also to. Um, so we're not just picking from one bin. It's not hard coded. The UBot actually has to go and look for the QR codes. It needs to be able to find the bins in order to manipulate the objects. Um, and so the way that we're doing this is we're using the AR codes. Um, and based off of this, um, we're able to get a six degree, uh, six degree uh, pose from the bin. Um, and the UBot can align with it. Uh, did we get that right? Yep. Um, and so from there, from there we're going to uh, grasp the bin, um, as you can see it doing now. Um, We'll then remove the bin from underneath the workplace um, and proceed to grab the object inside of the bin. We believe that this is more applicable to the at, at work scenario just be, um, because it's more likely that if you're in a workshop like a mechanical shop or an auto parts shop, objects aren't just going to be on top of workspaces. They will be there, but they won't exclusively be there. So it makes sense that um, like a competition that's aimed at industrial tasks tries to better replicate industrial environments. And so uh, we believe that by uh, demonstrating the ability to manipulate things and how they should think that it just better reflects a work-like environment. Uh, so there are several challenges that come uh, with this task in general, um, specifically ro locating the bins and drawers. As I mentioned, this is done through uh, the use of the AR tags. Um, grasping the bins is uh, very difficult, trying to find um, how to get the arm to grasp the bin so that you're not hitting the walls. Uh, so it's not finding it, so we just have it yeah. a little bit, it doesn't see the marker, so we just probably yeah, the bin. So as you can see there's still some difficulty, like um, when we picked this task we didn't just pick a task um, that we could perform. <laughs> That, that worked um, every time. We, we, we really wanted to push um, what we're able to do with the UBOT, and so sometimes this, like sometimes not everything works perfectly. Um, and we feel that um, it's better to try and push what we're doing further than what we're capable of, um, rather than just to do something that's comfortable and easy. Um, beyond this, uh, after this, uh, once we've placed the objects in the bin, we're going to move on to demonstrate uh, our ability to recognize objects. So beyond just grabbing objects um, in the bin, it's important that we can uh, recognize and categorize objects. Because if somebody asks us to grab a certain tool or a certain um, object for, for a task, it's important that we're able to recognize that. Um, but back to the bin for a second. A lot of the development for this was done using a uh, simulation. So before we try to put the robot into the environment and work with the object, we would simulate it to ensure that um, we weren't going to damage the robot, that everything was working the way we were supposed to. Um, and for this part, uh, the robot will point to the objects it recognizes and then say what they are. If everyone could try to be as quiet as possible, the speakers on our laptop aren't that strong. So in order to hear that it's actually recognizing and finding the objects, if everyone could, could be as quiet as possible, I'd be appreciated. So, um, as you can see on the screen, there are images flashing. Um, this is not the scene that you're seeing now. This is just to depict how we find objects. So, collect. Uh, yeah, so um, we collect uh, several frames, and then once we have that, we try to create a bounding box around the frame, and then we pick several um, attributes about the objects, color, size, orientation, um, in order to determine the objects. And as you may have heard, um, the UBOT, we're, we're capable of determining whether an object So like we're able to determine whether an object is laying or standing, and this is very important when it comes to grasping. Um, in the basic manipulation test and basic transportation test, um, as you can see, there's a web camera on the front. So we would use the connect to recognize the object. Um, and then once that had happened, we would use the webcam to better align the platform with those objects. 
so all the movement that's been happening with you guys has been on the directional. Uh, so we've been moving from one place to another. Um, instead of using differential drive, uh, we started to implement omnidirectional navigation. Uh, you get better performance. The UBOT tends to move uh, faster than one point to another. So, for example, like this, if we were using differential drive, we'd have to back up, turn, and go to where we are, and then back up and turn. Now, more importantly than this, we've also started to implement um, obstacle avoidance. And obstacle avoidance that the UBOT's not aware of. So, the UBOT's now going to try and move across the environment. But if we introduce an obstacle, the UBOT should hopefully be able to move around it. Unfortunately, it's a bit of a tight squeeze between ourselves and the other U bot. Super. <coughs> so, right now, it's trying to find the best path from where it is to where it needs to go, avoiding all the obstacles. Um, and so, as you can see, it took a bit of time, but our U bot was able to avoid the obstacle. But more important than so this is what you call a static obstacle. It's something the UBOT wasn't aware of, but it's still a pain to the UBOT because it needs to be able to avoid it and move around it. But more importantly for network, for a working scenario, is you're going to have employees um, inside of the environment moving around working with robots. And so the first thing, the, the robot needs to be able to avoid people. And I really hope it's going to avoid me. And so what we're able to demonstrate here is that with obstacle avoidance. So while um, we're, we're able to move around inside of the environment in the UBOT with the UI so that the human is interacting with the robot, um, the robot's not going to run them over, it's not going to um, crash into them, so it will stop and we'll play around the obstacle that has just introduced itself, in this case myself.